Shalom Aleichem friends, my name is Ciro Hernandez. I'm a teacher here at Harlingen Messianic Synagogue and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Insights from the Sador where we're going to be discussing Ashrei, which is Psalm 145 as part of Pesuke de Zimbra, the verses of singing portion of our Shacharit morning prayers. Now today we're going to be on pages 66 through 69 of the Art Scroll Sador and in Ashrei in Psalm 145. This psalm is so important that the sage is taught that whoever recites this psalm three times per day would be assured a place in Olam Haba in the world to come. As a result, it is recited twice during Shachari and once during the Mincha afternoon prayers. Now, obviously, the sages aren't saying that by just reading a bunch of uh, words in the book of Psalms would get us to heaven. What they meant was that those who live by the principles in Ashrei would have a place in heaven since they have made Hashem their life source and bring heaven down to earth every day of their lives. Now this psalm, which by the way was written by King David, is very unique in that its verses are arranged alphabetically according to the Hebrew alphabet, which obviously made it easy to remember. Now, let's begin. Praiseworthy are those who dwell in your house. May they always praise you, Salah. Now, according to the Talmud, sitting in the Beit Hamikdash is forbidden, except for a king in the lineage of David. Okay? So, let's look at Yohanan 8.2. Yeshua knew this. So, in Yohanan, book of John, chapter 8, verse 2, 8, verse 2 this is what it says. Early in the morning, he, meaning Yeshua, Yeshua, came again to the temple, to the Beit Hamikdash. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Where was he? In the temple. And what was he doing? Sitting down and teaching Torah to his people. Yeshua declared that he was a Mashiach, Ben David in the lineage of David by simply teaching Torah while sitting in the temple courtyards. Wow, how amazing is that? All that from just Psalm 145, from the beginning. Now, according to Rav Shrav's book on prayer, this verse refers to a person who lives his normal everyday life in the house of Hashem. In other words, everywhere he or she goes, he or she takes the house of Hashem with him or her. Everywhere we go, we are the temple. We are a walking Beit Hamikdash. Ashrei continues, I will exalt you, my God, the King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Now here, King David is referring to the Messianic era when Yeshua returns and when he will be sitting again on his throne in the third temple and we will worship him worship him forever because death will be no more. Hallelujah. I should have continues. Generation to generation will praise your acts and tell of your mighty deeds. In the Messianic era, the people will tell their children about how they witnessed Yeshua destroy all of his enemies with the sword of his mouth. Wow. I should have continues. The splendor's glory of your power and your wondrous deeds I shall discuss. They will express the remembrance of your abundant goodness and sing joyously of your righteousness. After King David has, has discussed the splendor of Hashem, the goyim that hear him, the nations that hear him, that hear this psalm by us declaring it, will want to do the same along with us. Our lives today, friends, should reflect his wondrous deeds and all that we do every single day of our lives, wherever we are, so much so that the goyim around us will want to join with us. Praise God. Adonai supports all the fallen ones and straightens all the bent. Now, up to this point, each line has followed the Aleph Bet, the Hebrew alphabet. However, this verse skips a letter. It skips a letter Nun, which gives us the N sound. Why is that? Well, the Gemara explains that the letter Nun is the first letter in the verse from Amos 5, verse 2, which says, She has fallen 
and will no longer rise a virgin of Israel. This is prophesying the fall of Israel as they kept going away and away from Hashem. However, King David didn't imagine in Psalm 145 what was temporal. He imagined the messianic era in the future where Hashem will support and lift up all who are physically and spiritually weak, all who have fallen. Therefore, nephilah, which is the Hebrew word for falling. And by the way, it starts with the letter nun, which was eliminated from ashrei, will be replaced by somech, which is a word support, which starts with the next letter in the alphabet, in the alphabet actually, which is samech. How amazing. So that one little detail, the nun is replaced by the samech, Falling is replaced by support forever and ever. Hallelujah. The eyes of all look to you with hope and you give them food in the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Now in our world, Hashem's hand is sometimes closed, quote unquote. As a result, there is hunger and starvation in our world. It's a sad reality. However, in the Messianic era, in Olam Haba, in the world to come, Hashem's hand will be open eternally and starvation will be no more. There's also tradition to touch the arm to fill in, which is also called the hand to fill in because it reaches to the hand, to represent our gratitude that Hashem opens His hand to provide for us and will do so forever and ever in the world to come. Hallelujah. We also touch the head to fill in. Since our minds remind us of our needs and our desires, of our hunger, or what we lack, which Hashem satisfies every day and will satisfy for all eternity in the Messianic era. Adonai is close to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him sincerely. Now, Contrary to popular opinion, Hashem is not close to everybody. Only those who seek Him, only those who seek His provision with true kavanah. What is kavanah? Is when we fully direct our hearts to heaven, our hearts to Hashem with total intent and focus. So He's not close to those who just read words in a sador. That's not what makes us close to Hashem. What draws us close to Hashem and what draws him close to us is those who pray as though they were standing before him with true intent. If he was before you, you would pray with intent. You would pray with focus, with all of your heart and all of your soul. That is for sure. That is, those are the people that he is close to. And finally, he will do the will of those who fear him. He will hear their cry and save them. Our reward for hearing for fearing Hashem is that He will cause us to stop wanting what we want, what this flesh wants, and we will begin wanting what He wants, what our soul or our spirit wants. That's our reward for fearing Him, since we only want what Hashem wants. That is what we're going to begin praying for. And as a result, when He hears our cries and our voices, Guess what he's going to do? He's going to grant us Yeshua, salvation, according to Ashrei. He's going to grant us the petitions of our hearts. Hallelujah. And uh, in the next uh, video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to chant Psalm 145, which is obviously called Ashrei. And until next time, my friends, Shalom Aleichem.